undriven by a brave life's will to act, unharassed by the spur of pity and fear, he makes no haste to untie the cosmic knot or the world's torn, jarring heart to reconcile. He, the immortal, our deepest need is to join the two extremes that now stand in opposition to each other, the dichotomy of day and night has to be dissolved in that which opposes them both. If there is a purpose in their existence, that purpose must be discovered. The truth behind them must be found. It is in that truth they must live, they must live together. Two are the mysterious ends of the plan. In that, the spirit's free and absolute potencies must be worked out, worked out in self-knowledge and self-power. These potencies obey only the eternal will, and it is in that will that this must be worked out. Their surrender to it, their commitment to it, is a point of their strength. Naturally, they remain impervious to desire and doom and hope, impervious to desire and doom and hope in contrast to the way in which we succumb to them. They have remained aloof, these immortals, these potencies. But it is that aloofness which drives man to surpass himself. Because he is driven by them, his passion wish the eternal calm. His seeking mind meets the omniscience of force, surely. There is a wisdom that hell was created, that death and fall exist behind the cell, behind this death and fall. There is the wiser wisdom. He may be subject to them, to death and fall and to hell. Surely, reach highs that otherwise cannot be attained. It is for that purpose, perhaps, we are subject to them. The immortal is awake to these realities, to these greatnesses, to these from which we have shut ourselves. The immortal does not see things the way we small mortal creatures do see. He looks on the hidden aspects. He looks on screen powers. He knows the law, he knows the natural line along which things move and progress. The immortal is not driven by life's more and transient will for action. There is always a broader picture in front of him, a broader perspective. He needs not pity and fear to spur him, to make him haste. His concern is to untie the cosmic knot. To achieve it, he waits patiently for the apt hour to arrive, waits for the eternal hour. The process of evolution may be tardy, but there is the secret spiritual truth in it, and it is that truth which is guiding it. It is working itself out. We are not moving in an aimless world, though we may not know the aim. There is the anarchy of fate. There is the bitterness of death and fall. Still, the hand that leads us, that protects us, is near us. One who has saved the world is also the Lord of the world. A mighty guidance takes us forward. Mm -hmm.